Here at Scott Performance Wire, we offer American-made wire sets for winning race cars from NHRA to NASCAR to SVRA and everything in between. See our site for the application-specific sets. However, if you're in the market for a custom set, see our easy-to-use custom order form. Today, I'd like to show you the best method to order a custom set. First, let's determine the routing. Yeah, well, routing is determined by, for instance, look at these valve covers right now. So this is a raised valve cover. Uh, obviously, our standard system will fit around it, but if, if you don't like the look, or if by chance it's a different configuration where it might create a problem, that's one of the obstacles. The other obstacle, obviously, is what I said earlier, aftermarket loom systems. Uh, there are many, many systems out there, and they're all a little different. And because of that, wire lengths are different. Now, beyond the looks and the functionality on top, if you've got a header system that has you know, large tubes, and in, in, in one case in particular, big block Chevrolets, guys use a lot of a large diamond primary tubes. You know, you have to you have to navigate that stuff. The choices are typically over the valve cover onto header. Uh, on over the valve cover gives us some easy access to the wires. It uh, gives us some aesthetics. Uh, under the under the header is a little bit more difficult to under, to uh, to install, but overall, if you have room uh, and you can make some brackets to help keep the wires in place, uh, it's probably a, a, a more maintenance-free type system. So you have to determine what you want to do first. Custom sets are are much easier, of course, if you have wires and we simply need to measure the existing wire. So when it comes to replicating a wire length, the tip to tip total length is by far the most accurate for us to work with because there's a lot of standards here. Uh, for instance, the, from the center line of the, tur of the boot to the outside of the boot, it's, it's pretty much an accepted standard. So we can work off of that and get some really good uh, measurements and be very close to, uh, to exactly what the customer wants. The center to center is just is accurate, but of course, you know, we have to do a little bit of math because there's a difference, okay? Certainly, we have to add for the boot. If you don't have spark plug wires, then we have to do it close line method. So we'll just work off of number one right now, just to keep it simple. So what I tell our, my customers that have never built a set of wires but want to build a custom set is I ask them to get at minimum 25 to 30 feet of, of close line. It kind of simulates a spark plug wire. Let's just say you have some billet looms. Uh, wherever those looms are, obviously you have to run the wire through it and you put a, a nice radius bend or a heart, whatever is required to get the look you want, okay? And then uh, we go from there to the spark. So in this case, I'll take the end of this, this rope, if you will, and I'll just tape it to the, to the terminal, okay? Just want to make sure that it stays on. My suggestion is once you do this and you get your lengths you want, measure them, keep those lengths in your toolbox, so in this case, we're going to run the wire on the outside of the breather tube, which is typical for the way I run, uh, uh, you know, or the valve cover set. Now, a couple of things you want to keep in mind, and we talked about obstacles. So, at least with a carburetor, for, for sure, we have a throttle linkage to to, uh, to work around. So make sure that when you run the wire, your throttle linkage is out of the way, and there's there's no possible way you can interfere with that. The other is how you're going to run it, and where you're going to adhere, or where you're going to clamp the wires to. Uh, be it at the valve cover or at the intake manifold. So you can see this has got a nice radius. It looks pretty cool. It flows well. We just follow it through. We run it to the tip of the spark plug. Now notice, you know, we're not tight. We have a bit of a of slack. Uh, it's always better to be a little long than too short, okay? Uh, obviously, we don't want it too long because that affects the looks. What this does it, it gives you an artistic perspective of your wire set. Now you know what all wires, all eight wires look like, in this case on a V8, and you can kind of critique it. If you don't like the way that you know, one wire is run, you can start over. You can shorten it, obviously, if, if need be, and uh, make it fit. In this case, we're using a 90-degree uh, terminal and boot at the spark plug, and we're using an ATI 90-degree terminal at the cap. So what we'll do is once we get this once we're happy, we'll measure the length. So this will be a center to center length. Center of the cap terminal to center of the spark plug. We'll take this tape measure, but we would take it and make sure that the wire is straight and parallel to the tape measure because we want an accurate, as accurate of a dimension as possible. So you can hold that in for us, my friend. So we're measuring 35 inches. So what you would do is on your custom order uh, sheet, 
or um, verbally over the phone, tell me the number one cylinder is 35 inches center to center. So go one through eight. Uh, you know, we'll do the math on our end to, to add, you know, the boot time or whatever else. And you know, I can say with, with great confidence that we'll, you know, we'll be within a quarter inch of what you want. We're just demonstrating on an LS with the coil packs mounted to the valve cover how we can come up with a custom length. We've taped the, the in this case, the, the rope, if you will, to the center of the coil tower to the tip of the spark plug. Uh, we would use, uh, in again, be, because of the configuration here, we'd use a 45 at the spark plug, and you would have a choice of actually three different coil uh, boot terminal configurations, a straight, a 45, and a 90. So the rule of thumb uh, that I, I tell my uh, customers is a fat finger width between the, the boot and the primary two. What happens if we don't have fat finger clearance? Uh, first of all, if we can change the configuration to help that situation, then that's part of what we do from a custom standpoint. If there is absolutely nothing we can do, uh, we can look at utilizing, uh, in this case, a thermal sock. All right, now, the, the thermal sock is high temperature fiberglass, it's rated 1400 degrees, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, the thing to also remember though is if that sock ever gets to 1400 degrees, more than likely the material inside is getting that hot as well. So you have to be a little careful. Uh, I don't want any phone calls about melted wires. So that's why it's, it's so important that we take our time to do this and make sure we're out of harm's way. This is the last step that we want to pursue in our order form, uh, you know, be it through the website or certainly verbally, is to define uh, what kind of terminals you have both on your cap and on your coil. Uh, this is a, an example of an HEI distributor. Uh, this configuration came out in the early 70s. You can see the terminal style. It looks much like a tip of a spark plug. Uh, the distributor cap in this case is an HEI style as well, and this is an HEI style coil, a coil pin like a spark plug. Okay, so this is an aftermarket uh, canister blaster two coil. This is an example of a, a socket style cap. Uh, it uses the same terminal as the coil, but it actually uses a different boot style because the, the tower of the connector on the, on the cab is much smaller in diameter than the tower diameter on the coil. So if you have a socket style configuration or if you have HEI here, but you use one of these coils, okay, then it's imperative that you tell us uh, that it is a blaster two style coil. So when it comes to ordering coil wires, V8 sets come with a 24 inch coil wire kit. Essentially what we do is terminate one end, we install a boot and install the sleeve, and then we supply a kit that allows you to either use a you know, socket style blaster two coil or uh, an aftermarket HEI coil. So what we prefer is that you take the time to actually measure your coil wire length. Uh, number one, it's easier for you to get a, a terminated and finished coil wire. You pull it out of the container or the box, you put it on your car, you're done, you're down the road. Guys, if you got any more questions and comments, feel free to get a hold of them. Thanks for watching us, gentlemen, guys, girls, ladies. Uh, I appreciate your time. I look forward to more videos.